As students from the Banda Islamic School in the Banda district of the Buno region merged as the best in the girls in ICT competition held in the region for young females, the girls in ICT seeks to introduce girls and young women to ICT, expose them to opportunities existing and inspire them to embrace ICT and studies in science, technology, engineering and mathematics, raise awareness amongst them and ultimately get them to pursue careers in these fields. As the whole world might grace to increase use of digital platforms. She beats 99 other students to emerge the overall best in the regional competition, which was contested among the participating schools in the 12 districts of the region. She received personal awards as well as awards for her school from the Minister for Communication and Digitalization, Esla Osu Ekufo. Patricia Obonai, the Chief Executive Officer of Vodafone Ghana, has been named the overall Best Private Sector CEO at the maiden edition of the Ghana CEO Awards. She was awarded with the Best CEO for the Telecom Industry at the event held on Friday at the Kempiski Gold Coast Hotel in Accra. Patricia, who happens to be the first Ghanaian CEO of the said company, has received many local and international honors for her innovative leadership. She is a staunch supporter of inclusivity and believes in leveraging technological advancement for economic growth and development. A press release from Ghana Armed Forces stated that the 37 military hospital will close down its maternity unit for a routine fumigation exercise from Wednesday 11th May 2022 to Wednesday 18th May 2022. The closure has become necessary to enable the hospital authorities to undertake a fumigation exercise as a remedy to any infestation of the unit. It will however be open to the general public on Thursday 19th May 2022. It is worth mentioning that measures have been put in place to manage entitled cases during the period. Any inconvenience that the closure will cause is deeply regretted. The global apparel manufacturing industry is driven by a workforce of which 80% are women. The USAID Trade Hub is partnering with DTRT, Ethical Apparel Africa and Global Mamas through a combined $2.6 million in co-investment grants to redefine the apparel manufacturing landscape in Ghana. My name is AJ Janet. I'm 21 years of age. I've been in Margaret for nine months now. I'm an agenda champion at Margaret's garment industry. I like working in Margaret's because since I completed school, I was not having any job to do. By joining Margaret's, I can also dress, full dress, and then I can earn money too as well. And I'm able to teach my fellow ladies who are not having work and who can't do anything. I am able to teach them so that they can make something for themselves. They don't depend on anyone. My name is Josephine Amonima in the warehouse department. I joined the company in April 2014. I was employed as a warehouse clerk. But over the years, through training, I've grown to become the assistant warehouse manager now. I was a shy type who always wants to be at the back. But through training and through the gradual promotion, I'm able to stand out to also manage people. Global Mames is focused on the woman, so how the woman can make income and support her family. There are certain families where the woman is the breadwinner of the family, so these organizations should continuously support us because it's all about empowering us. I'm a woman and I'm proud to say through Global Mames I'm able to support my family in a certain way. So I'll also be happy for other women to be able to support their families. Providing competitive pay, safe working conditions, on-the-job training, and career advancement opportunities, these partners are accelerating women's economic empowerment.
Hello Africa, welcome to ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices show. This is the show that tackles issues pertaining to women as they contribute to national development. You know, when it comes to apparel here in Ghana or across Africa, a lot of women have challenges. And part of the challenge is how to be able to create jobs in this industry, how to be able to employ other people, how to be able to get their fabrics out of the shores of Africa. And tonight, USAID, in collaboration with the Trade Hub, has put together an event that is going to be addressing the challenges and the strategies women are facing in this industry. So I'll get to talk to the panelists and they will showcase to us what the plans are and how we're going to move forward after putting together the strategies. Do enjoy the rest of the interesting lineup coming up. Do stay tuned. Um, the Trade Hub is I don't want to say the most important, but it is one of the largest funded um, USAID programs in West Africa in terms of its size, scope, and funding. We operate in 14 countries. Our headquarters are in Nigeria, uh, but uh, we have more than enough staff here. And the way we work is by co-investing with private sector companies and organizations uh, to boost economic development. So what this basically means is right now we have 77 countries, who, uh, 77 companies we have invested in, um, in agriculture, in water, health, and hygiene, in ecotourism, in Liberia, um, things revolving around COVID to just help speed economic development. And we do that by helping to create jobs, um, boosting food security, and boosting exports. And one of the main sectors that USAID Ghana has invested in is apparel, which is why we are here today to celebrate uh, three of our co-investment partners. And they are DTRT, when just, this is Mr. Wasanti, he'll be coming. And Global Mamas. And Ethical Pearl Africa, who is a partner of McGraw Grace. Right. And so we're here to celebrate them today and also to celebrate all the uh, women and men working uh, in apparel because really this event is for you. All right. And so with that, if you would please join us on the stage. I'm not going to ring her. I'm not going to read her very illustrious long bio. Suffice it to say she's beautiful. She has locks. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Thank you, good afternoon everyone. And thank you again for this opportunity. So to my colleague from the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection, Bir Bediako, to our colleagues from our co-investment partners from DTRT, as well as Global Mamas, as um, we are just so grateful and Ethical Apparel, we're so grateful to be here. I saw colleagues from across private sector in the apparel industry, and we're very pleased to have all of you, my colleagues from the West Africa Trade and Investment Hub. Ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. So I am honored to be here with you today. And really, I'm grateful for the opportunity to focus on empowering women in Ghana's apparel sector. The U.S. government, through USAID, is proud to support these three partners, Ethical Apparel, DTRT, and Global Mamas. Through the innovative development of human capacity and manufacturing, each of these firms is building Ghana's growing apparel sector. Today, we will hear how integrating gender, fairness, and an inclusive company culture into their business strategy has paid dividends for their company's respective successes. We'll also hear how the United States, through USAID, has supported these efforts and partnered with the private sector to contribute to economic growth and mutual prosperity through trade and investment. There is a major shift underway in the $1.5 trillion global apparel industry. As many of you know, buyers are actively diversifying their supply chains and seeking more competitive price points outside of Asia. This is a tremendous opportunity for economic growth in Ghana and particularly for Ghanaian women who have proven to be integral to the success of these apparel industries. We've demonstrated the capacity to meet international quality standards at scale. 
To continue to do so, apparel manufacturers must be able to find, hire, train, and promote talented workers, outfit them with the right equipment, and build new manufacturing centers customized to produce apparel for a variety of discerning customers in Europe and the United States. This is where we step in. For example, in Koforidua, USAID is supporting Ethical Apparel Africa to create 800 new jobs. Can we pause and give them a round of applause? 800 new jobs and train staff on efficient production practices at their upgraded factory facility. Ethical Apparel will use this factory as a model to showcase best practices to other Ghanaian garment manufacturers, also aiming to meet international standards. In Tema, USAID is supporting DTRT to expand its garment manufacturing operations and increase its exports to large international clothing bands. In the process, creating 2,000 new jobs, mostly for Ghanaian women. And finally, in its new eco-friendly facility, Nerpong in Ghana's Eastern region, Global Mamas is continuing to partner with its 350 producers to launch new handcrafted products and increase exports while boosting the skill sets and incomes of local women. This shared commitment to build human capacity along with manufacturing capacity marks a real behavior change for the industry and it's paying dividends. This radical approach of putting people first shows, serves as a microcosm of the work USAID is doing throughout Ghana to build a stronger, more prosperous trading partner. Hi everyone, seated right next to me is the chief of party here at the Trade Hub and he is called Robin. I'd like you to get to meet with him and get a better understanding of the reason why they actually have put together this event today. Welcome, Ramin. Thank you very much. We wanted to bring as much attention as we can to it. We, we realize challenges you're facing. Um, I think anybody who's involved in industry at this point, and apparel probably more so because of the export aspects of it, um, it's, it's just really difficult, but we feel that the apparel industry, all, particularly in Ghana, has a lot to offer. You know, does beautiful things and, and people should get a chance to see it. So obviously, you know, the more publicity that we can give to that, we're hoping that not only is that helping the apparel industry to be more sustainable, um, it's helping them also, uh, uh, the ones that we've given grants to, uh, it's helping them then to implement the what we call co-investment projects with them and uh, you know to be able to expand in different directions all right okay so having to work in you know um, this kind of event and because you really appreciate the fact that we have challenges with the export you've given grants to some of the women to be able to you know better their business so are you also going to do something around linking them with prospective buyers? Is that part of the conversation? Yes, very much so. Um, one of the things that we have, uh, another component of our project, the Trade Hub project, is uh, AGOA and exports. So when I say AGOA, you know, we're talking about the African Growth of Exports Act. And it, it, it specifically, basically, it, it allows uh, exports from Africa to come into the United States free of charge, free of any kind of tax. So if they meet certain requirements. Okay, so when they get to meet it, then you link them up with AGOA to make... Well, what we do is we have AGOA experts on the project. And so 
uh, we link them, and particularly we're looking at our grantees, but we also do work with other pro uh, with other uh, uh, businesses as well. And we initially have them, you know, fill out an application basically saying what they intend to do and whether they think they have the capability to export to the United States. And then we have uh, experts who work with them, trying to link them up and uh, help them uh, get over that hump because getting those first exports out is always difficult. It's always very difficult. So the final question I'm going to be asking is, you know, a lot of times people always have events and they say, okay, we're going to discuss the challenges and the strategies. You know, how are we going to be able to make things better? And then after some time, then it's like, okay, we had the event and nothing is happening yet. How different is it going to be with, with the Trade Hub? Well, I think one, one of the things which is true, and particularly with the apparel companies that we're working with, they're getting a pretty good-sized chunk of money. Um, I, I think in, uh, I don't know the exact amounts for, for many of them, but I think, for example, uh, for example, Global Mamas uh, is getting over a million dollars. Um, that really helps a company a great deal. If they're trying to export, if they're trying to develop new products, um, you can imagine. I mean, the the traditional USAID-funded project, in, in, in many cases, has limited grants and provides quite a lot of technical assistance. We're kind of the reverse. To a certain extent, we're saying, OK, you develop the project. You decide what you need and what you want, and what are the aspects, what are the things you want to fund around it. And then we accept your, your application, your proposal. And then, then you have the money. And yes, you, know, you have certain milestones. You have to report on those milestones. It's also a co-investment grant, which means we don't just give you money you have to also come up with a co-investment of at least one to one by ideally five to one. Great. I think you've answered my question. Thank you so much, Robin, for this time with us. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. I have a delectable lady sitting right next to me. And she is Honorable Jifa Gomashi, who is the MP of Ketu South. And she's got particular interests when it comes to women. And whilst we were having the panel discussion, I heard her really clamoring for a lot of attention around people in her community, her women. She's training them in various skills and is seeking the opportunity to even empower them the more. And it was quite interesting. Let's get to hear from her as she speaks further on how she seeks to empower women at Get to South. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm happy to be with you. And uh, congratulations on doing this for women. Um, if we celebrated ourselves enough, I am sure we'll have uh, more role models. So it's good that you're doing what you're doing. I, I think that uh, young people assess us by what they see and they don't know the struggle or the story behind what they're seeing now. I've braided hair before. I've sold clothes before. I mentioned it here that I used to sell with Charisma, uh, Hair Looks, Gracia Fabrics, um, Yvonne X, mm -hmm. we've, we've done trips to go and sell clothes just so I could make money to pay my school fees when I was in the university. And so I, when I became uh, uh, deputy minister, I also saw the need to celebrate and push the young ladies who are in the creative sector. Going forward, as um, the member of parliament for Katu South, I asked myself what I can do to teach my people how to fish so they don't always expect someone to bring it to them because the world is changing. The stage in which we are now um, is, is one that is, has seen a lot of people struggling financially and so it's important that we teach um, our youth other opportunities apart from wanting to join the police force, the military, immigration, fire service, and what have you, mm -hmm. that they can become employers as well. So 
um, I, I bought some machines. I bought uh, sewing machines. Um, I bought um, a machine to teach fixing broken phones. I bought a machine that teaches them how to make shoes. I'm teaching them how to make soap. I'm teaching them how to ICT, um, bead work. Um, I mentioned Fulera as well. Yes, you did. So for many years, Fulera used to come to cut to South to help me teach them how to make beaded stuff. Um, and so when um, Charles told me about this program, I thought that uh, it would be good for me to come here and listen to those who are already doing it. Are they looking for um, 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 employees? Are they looking for a satellite factory or a satellite office? Can I woo them to cut to south? And so, um, I, as I said, I'm, I'm just so delighted that uh, I didn't find it tiring driving three hours to come here this, this morning. Because what I've gained from here is not only for my benefit, but also for the number of people that I'm interacting with in the constituency. We have not, um, well, we've started, but I think we need to scale up the, the, the teaching of the need to go into skills development and self-employment and not always look out for um, jobs, white color jobs. I mean, do we have any anymore? We, we are choked, we are choked, everywhere is choked. And so um, it, is, it is my desire uh, to attend as many programs such as this one, to edify myself, to, to learn, to educate myself and acquire knowledge which I can then pass on. So indeed, when you heard me talking about it, it's because I have um, a large number of young people who are looking for opportunities. And what I've heard this morning uh, gives me hope, gives me a lot of hope. So it means that there can be people in Aplau, Danu, Kliko, or wherever in my constituency who may have somewhere to stay in Accra and can easily be employed. So we haven't even celebrated ourselves enough. We haven't brought these success stories out here. And it's, it's wonderful that you have given me the opportunity to also um, discuss it with you and, and for others to hear about it and tap into it. Sure, great. I mean, this is fantastic. So now she has made it something that everybody should hear about. There are so many people in Ketu South that she is clamoring for. She needs you to let her know the opportunities that abound wherever it is. She's going to find ways to get her people to access it. Thank you so much for sharing this time with us. If you're, if you're looking for people to employ, call me. <laughs> if you if you want to you want you want your off your a branch in in Ketu South, call me. Mm -hmm. We have opportunities out there in tourism, in uh, workforce, mm -hmm. in um, agriculture. Lots of coconuts. So those who are doing stuff with coconuts, either the uh, the the fruit, the juice, whatever. We have lots of coconuts there and land for you to also plant and, and uh, uh, cultivate for your businesses. So, yes. She <laughs> is indeed the singer of K2 South. Yes. So whatever it is you want in K2 South, give her a call and she is going to want to listen to you, especially if it has to do with empowering people of her community. Thank you very I much. I am so grateful for this opportunity. And may your, your, your um, African women's voices become one of the leading voices in our country. Oh, well, yes. thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I have Yabirago here with me, and she's the brain behind Soko Bags. A lot of you must have seen these bags. They look trendy, and they are environmentally friendly. Let's get to meet her one more time after we met her at the Empowering Women event at the AICC. Yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Ines. I'm so happy to see you here because it goes to say that you really want to see the brand grow to an extent that people get to see that women actually can own brands, you know, from the scratch to the time they begin to enjoy so much grace. And I want to say you've done so well with Circle Bags. I got one the last time I went. Hey, I bought it, okay? So do not think that you need to be getting freebies. 
in women's business, we need you to pay for the service. So don't call yeah and say, yeah, please let me have one of those bags. <laughs> Buy them, all right? And it's been good. I put my laptop in it and it was strong enough to carry me. It was just awesome. And I'm so happy that a woman is actually behind something like that. So today I've seen you here at the event that is uh, funded by USAID and powered by Trade Hub. I want to really understand again, why are you here with your circle bag? Well, um, I am here because I was invited, personally invited, and I, when I heard about the event, I'm like, this is an event that I need to be here to really know what people are actually doing in Ghana. And so when I came, I was quite impressed. Um, anything is possible because I do have a vision to get to where they are right now, to have a factory with more than 200 women working and really providing, empowering them through work ethics and through different, you know, initiatives. So being here and hearing from companies already established in Ghana, already doing what I want to do is quite empowering. And I really want to, you know, see that circle get, get, circle bed get to that level. Awesome. You know what? When you see her, she's a young lady and she's got this very big, big, big vision. So tell me, just before you, you take leave of me, what would you say to any young lady who is trying to get herself to become an entrepreneur just like you are? I would say just start. Start with anything that you have because when the vision is actually from God and the vision is actually true, things will start to align when you actually start. Don't worry about the resources that you don't have. Just start with the littlest that you have. I started Circle Bags with literally just a thousand cities, just buying one machine and essentially buying extra machines and getting more, you know, um, getting more contracts. But essentially just start with what you have, be confident, know what your value is, know what you're offering, what is your value proposition, why would someone need to buy your product before someone else? And, you know, just start. That's all I have to say. Just start. And eventually everything will come together. Awesome. Thank you so much, Yabirago. Thank you for having me. We are back and we have a social inclusion specialist seated right next to me. And I would love to really get you to understand what role she's playing here because I'm sure you're just trying to understand, okay, what's it all about? Ladies and gentlemen, join me as I make welcome Anne Apeke. You're welcome to African Women's Voices Show. Thank you very much. Great. So could you let my audience really understand what the social inclusion discussion is in today's event? Thank you. Let me just add, um, I'm, in, I'm in, in charge of gender and social inclusion. And so when you talk about gender, you know already the, what it, we do that affects men and women. And so with social inclusion, we are focusing on women and young people, as young adults. In this particular event, we are looking at how to promote gender and social inclusion in the apparel industry. And uh, we know in Ghana, when they say somebody is into um, the apparel industry, we don't, we don't really expect so much from them as people, because you think, well, they are just going to sow for subsistence, what to take care of they themselves and their families. But our program today goes beyond just subsistence. We are looking at giving women and young people the opportunity to be able to express themselves in what they sow, that is one, being able to market their products and being able to also expand their businesses and be able to create jobs for others and have businesses that can one, have impact in the country Ghana and also be able to export their garments, their apparels outside Ghana. And here we are talking about supporting the the, our partners here who are exporting garments to under uh, the Agua uh, program to the United States of America. Great. It's been wonderful really having you here. I am, I'm impressed. And since the program is all about strategies, we get to hear from you what the strategies will be to be able to get these people to do better for themselves. Thank you once again. Thank you. I am so excited to introduce the next person to you. She's been in the apparel industry for 37 good years, and she looks 37. <laughs> Believe you me. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get to meet the brain behind it. Please tell us your name. My name is Rabina Okra, and I'm the CEO of Winglow Clothes and Textiles and the director of Winglow Fashion Academy. 
Awesome. So particularly, I need you to highlight on the point you made when we're having the panel discussion. Just us. We heard it, but we want people who watch African Men's Voice Issue to also get to hear what you said because it really was an interesting point you made. You know, I, I, I just want to congratulate the, the companies, in, the Ghanaian companies in the apparel business who have made it big in the mass production area. And they've just set Ghana on the global uh, marketplace. But my question was, how do they leverage their position now so that they can bring up other women businesses that are also in the apparel space, but who haven't gotten to the point where they are by subcontracting and also helping with their technical and quality uh, improvement and even certification so that they can subcontract their uh, uh, orders to them. And in that way, they empower these uh, smaller uh, companies and they also get growth and, and empowerment. And then there is sustainability for the fashion industry in Ghana. That, that is where you know, my interest is. Great. So now that we know where your interest lies, could you tell us maybe in a very um, short, in short terms, what kind of impact has Winglo been able to make over these 37 years, especially when it comes to women? Yeah. We, um, I've spent 37 years of my life trying to empower women, really, because Winglo has always employed majority women. About 75% of my staff are women. Right now, I have five ladies in management position who help me to manage the business. And they are all women. All my managers are women. The supervisors are women. That is not to say that there are no men in the workplace. This year, we are retiring one of our um, male tailors who has worked in the company for 29 years. And Winglow itself is 37 years old. So you can see there is loyalty and there must be something that we are doing right. right that makes our workers stay. You know, we are a small company, but we recognize that empowerment leads to sustainability. And so we make, a, we make it a point to create a healthy environment for our workers. We are key on health and safety. We are also key on creating um, a comfortable menu for our women uh, dressmakers. And so when they are pregnant, we see them through the whole nine months. They go and then three months they bring the baby to work. We don't have what it takes to create a nursery for them but we create a space around them that is nurturing where they can, I mean, they can feed the baby, they can, the baby can sleep by them and so on. And so we've seen babies come at three months, go to nursery, I mean, grow. It's amazing. And so in a little way, we also empower our women and make them stay. Yes, thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Seated right next to me is Dorcas Baden. She is a manager at Global Mamas. She'll tell us a lot more about her brand, what they are doing here, and what they seek to achieve by being part of this event. You're welcome, Dorcas. Thank you. Great. So could you tell us what Global Mamas is all about? Um, so Global Mamas, it's, um, it's an NGO, and the aim is to provide sustainable diapers for women. Okay, awesome. And you've been in Ghana for about 20 years yeah. now. That's fantastic. I believe this is part of the reason why she is part of the panel. Because when it comes to what the challenges women are facing in the apparel industry, they definitely will be part of the go-to people. So could you just tell us maybe just one, the major challenge that women in this industry particularly face? And so I would say one challenge is that... Um women are facing working with global mamas is child care so after um they have to resume back from their maternity leave 
they don't get people to take care of their uh, kids for them to go back to work. Sometimes too, they have to spend a lot because taking a child into a crutch, spending transportation, moving from one place to another, also getting uh, the woman, mama getting back to work is a whole lot of issues. So sometimes people resigned because they don't have people to take care of their babies. People risking um, sending their babies to crutch or having somebody come in the house taking care of them, they don't feel comfortable. So sometimes they have to resign, yes, for about a year. And sometimes they reapply to, if there's a chance, we take them back. All right, thank you so much. It's been amazing talking to you. And we definitely will have to talk deeper with Global Mamas. Thank you. Thank you too. Okay, my name is Majesty Stedham. I work with um, Testa EAA, which is a project of GIZ. Um, as you all know, GIZ is a German aid, the aid that they give to Ghana. So there is a project that we are trying to bring it on board, which will be launched on the 13th of May next week, which talks about developed ventures. So with these developed ventures, we are looking at young startups and um, innovative businesses, especially we are looking out for women that are CEOs, women that are striving for the best, to come and then um, get benefits from this Develop um, Ventures um, program. So with the Develop Ventures, we are looking at a matching grant of 2,500 euro. So when you have a matching grant of 2,500 euro, either from the bank, it can either be from any aid or any grant that somebody in a company or any aid um, donor is ready to give you, GIZ is ready to give you up to 2,500 euro. And the least we can give you is up to 1,000 euro or even, uh, yes, 10,000 or 1,000 euro. It's, it's, it's what we can give you. So we are also looking out for you to have good financial records um, your business has to be innovative. So I will use this opportunity or this platform to reach out to women, to log on to develop um, ventures, www.developventures, develop, to register and then read so much about it. And then it will be out everywhere, every outline. I won't even put, I'll be ready to put on my telephone number for anybody to reach me for assistance, if you allow me. To. Go ahead. Okay, so you can reach me on 059 3807598. Thank you. It has been an amazing time here at the event that is really empowering women in the apparel industry here in Ghana. We've been able to go through the challenges that women face and also have been able to put together strategies to get things better. I want to say a very big thank you to USAID for always funding opportunities like this. And a big thank you also to the Trade Hub here in West Africa and the team. It's been an amazing time and we look forward to the next empowering session. Do enjoy the rest of our interesting lineup for you. Bye-bye.